How's it going guys? Welcome back to another JHR review. And today we have another really interesting camera lens. Now this one's by Aki Global and uh, it comes in a really nice black box. And this one is a little bit more advanced than some of the other camera lenses that I uh, reviewed. As you can see it comes in a full box versus the tiny little uh, paper packagings. So let's go ahead and open this up and see what it's all about. Looks like it has a top kind of clamp design, like some of the other boxes we've opened. Ooh, look at this. It comes in a really nice looking kind of mesh hard case, kind of like a, maybe like a Game Boy case or something like that. Very resistant. Let's go ahead and set that to the side real quick. And then on the inside right here, it looks as though we have a little thing right here from Aki Global. It says, Dear customer, thanks for choosing Aki Global. The lens will make your life a little bit more interesting and wonderful. And it says, if uh, you have any kind of uh, questions, let them know. And make sure to rate them on Amazon. There we go. And then it comes with an instruction booklet. And then uh, some of the stuff that comes inside. Let's go ahead and open this up and see how these parts are. Alright, here we go. Ooh, look at that. It looks like an arsenal in here. That has some weight to it too. That is nice. This is a 18x telephoto lens with an adjustable ring for focus. How cool is that? Let's set that to the side. And now we have, I believe this is the clip right here with an adjustable thing to actually tighten it onto the phone itself. That is neat, that is very advanced because the other ones they just have kind of like a spring. This feels very professional. And it has a resistant rubber thing here too, so it won't slip around. And we have three lenses right here, it looks like. This one right here is a... Let's zoom in on that. This is a fisheye lens, 198 degree. And this is what the lens looks like. And then right here we have a... 20 times macro. Man, my fingers look bad today. <laughs> Gotta get some lotion or something. And then right here we have an 120 degree wide angle lens. And it looks like it comes with a few other things right here. It comes with an extra attachment. I'm not sure, maybe this is in case your phone um, it is a little bit too long down, kind of like my Samsung. That way it can actually still reach. It's just a simple clamshell, but it's still nice to know that they included something just in case. And we have... Oh, you know what this is? This is totally one of those light blocking things to where when the sun's coming down it doesn't touch the lens. That's so cool. And then, of course, it comes with a microfiber cleaning cloth, which is going to be very handy for cleaning the lenses and keeping them safe. And, of course, this beautiful kind of mesh storage case is really nice. Super impressed that they include it. It's all uh, made out of some really nice foam, so it'll keep all of your stuff nice and safe. And you could just bring this with you in, like, I don't know, your purse or your bag or your backpack and uh, you just pull it out and boom, you have uh, something more professional and uh, a little bit more advanced to attach to your phone for photos. So let's go ahead and test this out and uh, see what kind of shots we can get. All right, here we are outside and I already have the fisheye lens attached to the extra attachment. This one didn't work for my V20 for some reason because I guess I just don't have enough lip space in order to get it on there, so I opted to just kind of use this one. So the first one we're going to try is the fisheye. Kind of get it positioned on here. So 
So this is what the fish eye looks like. Sorry for any background noise, by the way. Not too bad. Looks pretty good. Kind of get that warped perspective. And then the next one we're going to try is going to be... Zoom in on that. The wide angle. I'm just going to go ahead and take these off so it has the little uh, plastic cover. And then the lens projector too, I'm going to take that off. Sorry for the blurry picture. Alright, and then all we do is screw the attachment onto the little clip. And then we go ahead and slide it back on. Until we find the right spot. And there we go. So this is with the wide angle lens. And then this is without the wide angle lens. So if you see the corners of the image, you get a significantly larger wide angle picture when you put it on. I was going to take that one off. And then we're just going to unscrew it. And now we have the 20 times macro lens. And we're just going to attach it like all the other ones, just screw it on there real quick. And for this one, we're actually going to go over here. That's a little bit different than a lot of the other videos I do. And we're going to go ahead and see if we can get some uh, zoom in on these plants right here. Let's go ahead and attach it. Look at that. That's pretty cool. I wonder how far we can zoom in on this. I'm going to do manual focus and see if I can get it to go in even farther. That's about as far as we can go. Now let's look at these uh, flowers on here. Look at that. That looks super, like, professional right there. You put that on Instagram, huh? Alright, and then the next one we're going to try is this big whopping telephoto lens. So, as with all the other ones, we just screw it onto the mount. And then attach it. Whoa! Let's see what we can do on here. I'm going to have my fiancé hold the phone for me. And then... Ooh, look at that. So I'm using the manual ring to focus on here. This is like an actual lens. And look how far we can zoom in over here. You can get the bush all the way over there. See the little bird feeder? Watch when I remove the lens. That's how far away it is. How cool is that? Look at this big lens right here. All right, we're going to go ahead and go back inside. And uh, yeah. All right, now we're back inside right here. I think out of all of the lenses that I tried out, I think the 18x uh, telephoto lens is my favorite. But all of the lenses right here are made really well, solid metal and glass, and I really like how they have two different attachments in case your phone isn't compatible with one of them. Um, this one right up here worked really good for my LG, and off camera I actually tried this on my Samsung phone, and that works really good. So if you have a Samsung, this will work perfectly. And yeah, pretty solid kit. I would suggest if you're going to get a camera lens, you might as well just get the whole kit, because, I mean, you get everything here and uh, versus just one single attachment. But yeah, and today we're looking at a Howyate, I believe that's how you say it. This is a USB to HDMI connector. Now this is going to allow you on pretty much any USB Samsung phone or USB Type-C Samsung phone and I believe some iPhones as well to be able to plug it into your phone and they get HDMI output from that. It gives you a really large range of options such as uh, hooking it up to play games on the bigger screen. You could hook up Hulu and just uh, you know, have to have like a Chromecast if you're visiting a hotel. Um, or you could hook it up to OBS using like a game capture card. So I thought it would be really neat to buy it for the channel and see if I can get this camera instead of recording just on the cell phone to record through the PC and maybe uh, beef up the setup a little bit. So that's what the front looks like. 
Let's go ahead and zoom in on this. It says features a USB Type-C to HDMI adapter. It says ideal for office, conference room, trade shows, home entertainment, uh, display, uh, school, corporate training. So it has a very wide field of uh, compatibilities. I believe you can even hook it up to a MacBook for uh, USB-C output as well. Or is that called Thunderbolt? I'm not too sure. So it says it also um, supports 4K, which is awesome. And then they have a little thing down here if you want to support them, or not support them, but uh, get support in case you're having any trouble. All right, without further ado, I'm going to grab my cell phone, and then I'm going to grab a monitor, and I'm going to show you guys the different capabilities of this. So, stay tuned. All right, so I got my cell phone right here, so let's go ahead and unpackage this. And it just slides out. I think I saw something else in here too. It says that there's a gift card. Let me go ahead and look at it. it says it'll send me a $25 gift card if I'm interested then in to email support, but I don't know how uh, true that is. So let's go ahead and pop this out of here. I unfortunately decided to get the cheaper one, and the unfortunate part is there's no um, USB-C on the side to also charge at the same time. So you're going to be kind of up to how long your phone lasts. I should have got the other one, but it was about a $7 difference, and I just kind of wanted to see if it would work in general before I put out the extra money. So let's go ahead and turn the phone on. All right, so I have the phone here, and I have the monitor, and I have the HDMI, so I'm just going to go ahead and plug it in. And as you see, it is automatically connecting. It says Samsung DeX. Your phone's connected to your display. Now you're ready for the full desktop experience. Start. And here we go. It actually gives you a full desktop looking view in Samsung, which is really cool. Um, I'm not sure how you adjust the screen resolution yet, but let's go ahead and turn down the brightness a little bit so you can see the monitor. Alright, so I kind of want to be able to see exactly what I see on my phone, so we're going to go ahead and look at the settings and see if we can do that. So we're going to do this, and here we go. When I swipe left and right, it shows exactly what I'm doing on here, which is really cool. So if we open up camera, alright, so as we see we got the camera up here on the screen now. If I turn my phone sideways, it doesn't seem to adjust with everything. So we're probably going to have to figure out how to do that. But besides that, um, let's say you wanted to put up this uh, Mario Kart game. You can display it directly on here and then you can play it in the bigger screen. Um, your email, anything, you could just uh, plug it in. So I can't seem to figure out how to do widescreen on this one yet because Samsung has their own kind of proprietary software for this. But, um, well that's kind of weird kind of getting that uh, infinity effect, but I'm going to be using a different phone anyways. I'm going to be using the V20 to try to kind of hook up for my PC for camera, so that's not really going to be that big of a deal, but it works, and it was super simple. I didn't have to do anything special. I just plugged it into the bottom of the phone, and it automatically connected, so I'd say that's five stars for me. That's exactly what I was looking for. And today we have these two Vaunt packs. These both have two packs of LED lanterns in here. But we're just going to be unboxing one of these today. So right here we have the two pack right here. It has 360 illumination. It says it's built with military grade materials. It has a superb bright white LEDs, I believe. But yeah, these could be used for camping, or you could use it, you know, maybe in your backyard or something. Um, also be really good in case of, like, emergency cases. Maybe the power goes out and you need, like, some good illumination. Maybe you put a hook up in the ceiling, you just hook it up in your kitchen, and then you can get 360 illumination for, like, when the power goes out. So, this is what the front of the box looks like. Right here, it gives a little bit of the specifications. It says, um... 
30 LEDs, 140 LM lumens, 8.36 ounces, and the power uses three AA batteries. And then it also gives uh, dimensions when it's collapsed. Also, if you want to check out their social media, it's right here at the bottom. And then the back just says uh, camping lanterns. So let's go ahead and open these up and see what they're about. Here we go. So right off the bat, we have some batteries, it looks like, right here. You actually get two packs of batteries that come with it, which is really convenient. We don't have to go out and buy any. I definitely would suggest having backups, though, just in case. So let's go ahead and uh, take this out. So this is what the lantern looks like. It's significantly larger than the lantern that I reviewed from the dollar store. And it seems like it's built a little bit better, too. So this is where the battery compartment is. Let's go ahead and unpackage one of these and then put in the batteries and see how bright this thing is. All right, let's go ahead and load in the batteries. And then we'll screw on the bottom again. on there pretty tight. All right, let's go ahead and open this up. So it opens up, but it is a little bit hard to open up, I noticed. It doesn't seem like there's any kind of like lubrication or anything, so it's kind of hard to uh, push it in there. It's not a very smooth experience, but the LEDs on here are actually really nice and bright and white. I like them quite a bit. Kind of has these reflective panels on there too. And if we put it right over here, we can turn the light down and see how much it illuminates. So it's able to illuminate pretty much the whole area. And you can see my hand, and this is uh, the batteries. So it, it illuminates pretty well. Everything in the entire area is pretty good. It's just a little bit stiff when it comes to opening, which might change depending on how many times you open it and close it. I'm not too sure. So yeah, it works pretty well. And then if you wanted, you didn't even have to have these up. But if you do, you can actually hang them on something. So if I wanted to have like my finger up here, I could just pretend that this is a hook and you could just hang it on something like a, like a lantern. <laughs> but yeah. Not too bad, pretty bright, and uh, I think I'll keep these as backup in case of an emergency because you always uh, need to make sure you have something in case the power goes out. One of the days, um, maybe a year ago, the power went out for about 16 hours and we would only really had some cheap little flashlights, so it's always good to be prepared. But yeah. And today we're going to be looking at an indoor security camera and LED light by Azone. But before we get into that, uh, I have a new setup. Um, let me know in the comments below what you think. I'm really happy with the new sleek black design, and I think it might be a lot easier for people who are watching my stuff to sleep. Drop a comment. So first of all, let's go ahead and check out the box. So we have a nice kind of shiny sleek box right here. Kind of looks like a kind of futuristic, like a little eye or something. If we turn it on its side and we zoom in right here, let's go ahead and zoom in. It says we have a 355 degree panoramic view. It has motion tracking for animals, which I'm probably primarily going to use this to watch my cats um, as a, I'm on like on a trip or something. And it has an ultra bright uh, LED as well. Let's go ahead and turn it around. So it says quick stat art, but I think it means quick start. It might be a translation error, but right here we have a little bit of the specifications if we bring it in a little bit closer. 
Right here it says, search for IPC360, an application store, or Google Play, and then download and install the app. Number two, select setup device and select LED light cam wired. And then follow the in-app instruction to set up the spotlight cam. And then it shows that you can get it on either the App Store or Google Play. And I said this is by A-Zone. And then right here on this side, let's zoom in on that. It says it's also night vision, two-way audio, and activity alerts. So you're going to get a ping notification every time you see movement. So if you want to go on a really big trip and keep this in your house, then if you see any movement, if you don't have any animals, then you will automatically get the record and you'll know something's going on. So let's go ahead and open this up and see what it's all about. So it's just a uh, sleeve that slides off. It looks like it comes out like this. So let's go ahead and set that down. There we go. And then this is what it looks like in the box. It comes with a little kind of blue cellophane to cover the lens. And if I'm not mistaken, you can actually move the camera on your phone, which is really futuristic and really cool. I don't know, I feel like secret agent Cody Banks if you uh, have ever seen that really old movie. It comes with the charger in here. Let's see what kind of thing it uses. My guess is micro USB. Yep, yeah, uses micro USB. And that's the charging base. It comes with screws and hollow wall anchors so that's a very nice inclusion so you don't have to buy them yourself and then I believe this is the clip to clip it to the wall let's go ahead and take this out of here so it's actually pretty compact this is really cool actually and right here I believe this is the light portion let's go ahead and pull that out along with the instruction booklet set that down and then I'll move that out of the way So it comes with this little top thing right here. I'm assuming that this is the light, actually. So let's go ahead and see what's up with that. Looks like there's these little prongs that it goes into. Not too sure how it sets down. Oh, it magnetizes, actually. Yeah, magnetizes. That's interesting. Oh, you know what this is? I might be wrong, but I think this might be a light that actually charges in an emergency situation you can take it off and you can bring it with you. It might be one of those. That would be really cool. All right, so this is what it looks like. Looks like we have an adjustable, I think both directions, a uh, little camera right here. Um, actually, no, the bottom base moves and this moves up and down. That's really cool. So you can get a complete 366, like it said. And I believe this is an infrared sensor for the lighting. And then on the back right here, you have the option to also put in a micro SD, which is really cool. So you can save, you can put in like a few gigabytes right there, or you could have it go immediately to your uh, phone and record it on your cloud device as well. This also works with Alexa. I know I'm throwing a bunch of stuff at you guys. Here's the charging port. But this has a lot of different features, and it's super impressive. So let's go ahead and hook this up to my phone and see what it's all about. All right, so I put my camera in the backyard. So basically now I can rotate 360 completely around. I can look down. So there's my jacuzzi right there. Has the trash cans keep going we have the grill right here you can rotate up to see the plants in the background and then I have it set on the uh, bricks that we have right here we have uh, some charcoal fluid right there some wood chips over there so it rotates all the way that way and then we can rotate the other direction completely as well and then this is the ping pong table we have over here. And we have some ladders stored right there. But yeah, it works really well. And it's really impressive, I'm going to be honest. 
you look up, you can see the trees. You can even see the sky. Wow, look at that. Let's go ahead and rotate that a little bit. See if I can get it to rotate, though. Let me see. Uh, full screen. There we go. Look at that. There we go, kind of loads in. You can even see the plants moving too. You see the wind? How cool is that? That is awesome. I really like this camera, I'm not gonna lie. That is super impressive. You can just take a photo too. Boom, snapshot taken, saved an album. You could put that on Facebook, Instagram. I mean, you don't even have to use this for security. You could just use this as like, you know, if you want to take pictures or like maybe even do like a a turn and then a shot, a turn and then a shot and then do like a panoramic. That would be pretty cool. What do you guys think? I think this camera has amazing possibilities and I am just super impressed with how easy it is to like navigate it on your phone. That's, that's some pretty cool stuff right there. Let's go ahead and look up at the sky. It's kind of cloudy today. You actually can see the clouds moving if you look at it like really closely. Like a little peek into my life, huh? And today I have some more individually packed erasers. Now it's been a little while, almost a month since I've uh, made an individually packed eraser video by iWacko, but I thought it'd be really nice to be able to kind of go back to a little bit more Japanese stuff. So let's go ahead and unpackage these individually and see what we got. All right, so right here we have some traditional looking Japanese food dishes. So let's go ahead and grab the scissors and open this up. Let's go ahead and slide these out. So the first one we got here is kind of like a rice ball. It has some kind of what looks to be fish in the center, probably salmon. But uh, this is the outside right here. You can see they put in some details from the seaweed, which is really cool. One reason I really like these individually packed erasers is how much detail they're able to pack in on these tiny little things. I love interesting engineering. So you can see all that right there. And then even the individually created grains of rice. And these are actually puzzle erasers if you haven't seen my videos before. Most of the time, these pieces actually come apart, so most likely, yep, you can, you see right there, you can actually take it apart, and it's a two-piece on the inside, so push it back together, and it fits together like a little kind of uh, interlocking mechanism. Pretty cool stuff. All right, and right here it looks like we have some sort of curry dish with some uh, rice on the side. Really like the detail in the plate with the little tiny uh, marks. Really makes it look like it's uh, an actual plate. We also have the two pegs in the bottom, so if we push that up, we actually can remove the rice and or also remove the curry, which I'm not gonna pop that out, but as you can see, it pops out. And then you can just pop it back in. So it would be really cool about this is you could actually like take the curry or that and only use those two. And as you erase with these, you could kind of like look like you're finishing your plate very slowly. Interesting idea. And this one right here, wow, look at those noodle details. And look how small this thing is. This is comparing it to my finger. So this looks to be, um, I would assume a thing of ramen noodles. And this little thing right here, which looks to be tempura shrimp. Fried tempura shrimp. Tempura. <laughs> uh, actually comes out. And I believe the noodles do too. That pops back in there. And I believe these are green beans. It looks like green beans. And you can pop those back in there as well. But the details on this thing are insane. Look at those noodles. I put that to the side. And then the next 
ones we got right here are some Japanese style dolls. So let's go ahead and open this up. Zoom in on there. Let's go ahead and slide these guys out. Now I've seen these things lots of places, but I'm actually not too sure how they originated or what they're used for. But they're very cute, and if you know what these are uh, traditionally, please let me know in the comments below. So it looks like their heads come off. Well, the hair does. And then the face comes off into two different pieces, which I'm not going to take it off. But it also looks as though the eyes are separate too. So this black pig has another piece attached to it that's pushing forward. Actually, let me just show you. Let me just show you. So this is how that functions. This is actually the eyeballs right there, if you can see it. If you push it through, the eyes push through and then make their way right there. And then the hair makes up the face. Pretty cool. And the whole bottom right here is a racer as well. But let's take a minute to look at this really pretty kimono that she's wearing. has some flowers and like a greenish pink kind of gradient with a little bit of blue in there very nice and since we uh took the head off the other ones we're not going to do that to this one but this one is like a kind of like a pink it has a nice red kimono with some beads looks like there's some fan print right there too and this one has uh, brown hair And then we have the last one right here. It's a uh, yellow kimono with kind of a orange and then uh, purple gradient with some really pretty flowers right here. All right, and that was the last one of those. And now we have a bit of uh, musical instruments. So let's go ahead and uh, see what these are all about. Move that to the side. Let's just push these out of here. All right. So the first one I want to look at is the piano because I like pianos. Let's go ahead and zoom in on that. So I notice it's a little bit beat up. So a racer material, as you know, just light scratches like that with my fingernail are enough to make it kind of like turn a little bit white. So it's not really the eraser's fault. Yeah, we have the piano keys right there. Look at the details in those. And then it looks as though you can actually remove the top of the piano. You see that right there? And you probably can remove the keys as well. Yeah, you can. See, so yeah, I'm able to lift up the keys right there. And then it all snaps back together into a little tiny piano. Be really cute if I get a picture of my hamster with this, huh? Make it look like he's playing piano. Let's put that to the side. And right here, I believe this is one of those uh, ones you blow into, actually. So you blow into that, and then you press the keys on there, and it makes some noise. Looks as though that doesn't stay on there very well, though. So you're definitely going to lose that. So that comes apart. That's the first thing. And then the next thing is the keys also come out as well. All right, so if you take this out of here, I love engineering like this. The keys are two separate puzzle pieces together. I'm assuming the other piano was as well. All of these intricately lock into its spot in order to have a three-dimensional keypad made of eraser. They did not have to go through that much effort, but they did, and it's really neat. Let's go ahead and pop that back in there. And the last one we have right here is a flute, which I'm not very happy about its design. As you see right here, these things are very weak. Um, I've never really given a bad review for an eraser before, but it's really flimsy if you look at that. That is going to get lost very fast, but it's still cool that it all comes apart and whatnot. Not my favorite, but still a neat idea. Move that out of the way. 
And then this is going to be the last one that we do. Because I noticed that the other one I have in here, I already had reviewed that pack before. I must have double bought it. And I think I reviewed some of the different ones of these. But I think that these might be slightly different. Let's go ahead and set these down. So right here it looks as though we have a coffee cake. Let's go ahead and zoom in on that as far as we can. Look at the details in the breading. Now I believe I did a strawberry ones of these before. So the center right here, this kind of coffee looking thing, it actually pushes out. See if I put pressure right there? It actually comes apart. Very nice, very cute. And then right here we have a biscuit but more of an ice cream sandwich looking thing to me. What do you guys think? Kind of reminds me of an ice cream sandwich. And obviously this one's just going to be a three layer one. So if we pull it apart, we see that uh, this one's kind of the uh, Lego piece. And this one kind of goes in and locks in there. Pretty cool biscuit. And then this thing, I reviewed one of these before. I think it was a different color, but I can't really remember the name of it. And then uh, it comes apart, I believe, in a bunch of different ways. So this part comes off, the cream comes off, and then the back is just a solid piece. But this is what that looks like. Pretty neat. But yeah, I think these uh, erasers are going to be kind of a staple for my channel. And uh, yeah, I really enjoyed unpackaging them for you guys, and I hope that you guys enjoyed uh, checking them out with me. But yeah, and today I have a cord and a travel case organizer that I'm going to be checking out by Dear MT Ernest, I believe the name is. I'll have their shop linked in the description below, and so you guys can pick one of these up yourself. So let's go ahead and remove the plastic wrapping. So right off the bat, it has a nice kind of uh, material to it. Let's go ahead and zoom in right here. Has a uh, nice little latch right here so you can actually uh, clip it on something. And then on this side right here, we have two different zippers. Kind of has like an interesting little texture to that. I don't know if you can see that. Kind of has a little texture to the actual zipper. That's kind of cool. So here's the inside. Can move this back a little bit. Turn up the lighting a little bit. Let's go ahead and see what we got here. So it actually has a bunch of Velcro ties in here. You can wrap your cords all up and you can actually store them in these little pouches. I believe there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, that's probably nine. I probably miscounted. Probably one of these for each of the little slots right here so you can easily store your cords. It also has a place for a cell phone right here or a cell phone right here as well. And it also comes with a nice little uh, clip on for that clip that I showed you on the outside. I believe it's on this side. Let's go ahead and clip that on. Here we go. So we're just gonna, oh no, it's this side. I was right. So we're just gonna grab this and just push it on here, I believe. There we go. Perfect. All right, so let's go ahead and see if I can fit my uh, cell phone inside of there. Let's go ahead and unzip it. And we're just going to slide this in here and push it in. It looks like it's a little tight. I'm worried about breaking the zipper. Let's see. Oh, no, I can fit it in there. Does it zip up though? Yeah, it actually fits. I think maybe if I didn't have my thick case on here, it'd go in there a lot easier, but it actually goes in there. And uh, it's pretty impressive that it could fit it even with my case. So now let's go ahead and grab ourselves a USB. So we're gonna wanna see about storing that, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and bundle up this micro USB. Now I just need to get this tie, put it around here, put it through the loop, and then 
นพวกอ่าอ่าอ่าอ่าอ่าอ่าอ่าอ่าอ่าอ่าอ่าอ่าอ่าอ่าอ่าอ่าอ่าอ่าอ่าอ่าอ่าอ่าอ่าอ่าอ่า
mesh blue material. I believe this is the part where you'd put your money, receipts, or anything like that. Loose change. Another cool thing right here is if you undo the Velcro on the front, there's also some patches in here, or some pouches, that you can actually put like credit cards or things like that into as well, which is really cool. So you could put in like uh, maybe some gift cards or your credit cards or things like that, and then you just push that up. And then, uh, yeah, also could be really great for holding pencils too. And then the center portion right here has a little bit of a foam thing. It's really nice they included this. That way it helps uh, keep its shape and shipping. I have two little things in there. Let's take those out. You know, you technically, if, if you didn't care about like looks, you could technically leave that at the bottom to help it keep its shape even for a longer period of time. So this is what the inside looks like. Same mesh material as the other one. And then over here we have a little compartment, it looks like. Actually, no, that's the outside where the zipper is. So you have this whole compartment right here. So you could definitely fit like maybe your cell phone or something like that. You could fit like, uh, I don't know, microfiber cloth. That's the only things I have laying around. You know, pretty much anything that you want to keep in here. So that's a pretty good amount of space. Um, give me one second. So you could put like your USB cables in here if you wanted to. Let's say you're a photographer. I mean, why not? Here's a little tripod. Look at that. That whole thing fits in there too. So you can bring your tripod with you. You, you could pretty much put anything you want in there. And that definitely could hold up to like four or five phones given the uh, size. So I really like that. I think my fiance will like this too. She's been needing a little bag something like that to be able to keep her stuff in. She has a little cat wallet, so she's really into the uh, kawaii stuff, so I'm excited to be able to give this to her. And I'm really excited that Modes for You decided to send me out so I could uh, review some other product. Very excited about this. And yeah, and what could this mysterious object be? Now, for people who haven't been on my channel for a long time and since the beginning, um, I do review a lot of Japanese products. And this is a Japanese gacha, and this was sent to me by Modes for You. They're a um, company located in Hong Kong that ship international kawaii products. So I'm really excited to take a look at this. And uh, unlike traditional gacha, you can actually buy the one that you're looking for. Um, so if you're not much for wasting your money trying to get the one you want, you can actually order it right off their website. So let's go ahead and open it up and see what we got here. I mean, I know, but you guys don't. Go ahead and pop this open. It's kind of like a little egg. And we have a really cute, as you can see, Pikachu. But not only that, the little instruction booklet, I'll put it right there. Or probably the other different ones. This little Pikachu, let's go ahead and zoom in on it real quick, comes in a little teacup. So let's go ahead and open that up and see how it looks. All right, now that we uh, unpackage them, let's go ahead and see what this Pikachu looks like up close. So this is what the Pikachu looks like. It has really nice detail in the mouth and the nose. There is no kind of uh, non-symmetrical looking parts to it, which I like. The tail is cute. Has those cute little Pikachu feet. And the paint job is pretty good as well. And then we have the little teacup right here, which is a Pokeball. It's really nice because it actually is uh, raised up, so you can actually feel it all the way around. Gives a little bit more detail, as you can see right there. Feels more like a button. And then you can actually just set the Pikachu inside of here, like that. And he rests on there. Got a little hair on my finger. And look at that. How cute is this? Like, I really like, as you've seen, my uh, Japanese puzzle erasers from uh, iWacko. I really enjoy cute little uh, items like that. And this one is not an eraser, but like, it's so cute. Like, you could have like a whole little like, you know, shelf dedicated to cute little Pokemon teacups. And uh, yeah, I, I really like this. And uh, 
I'm surprised at the quality given it's uh, gotcha. It's actually really good quality. But yeah, like I said before, this was sent to me by Modes for You. So I'm gonna go ahead and put them in the link in the description below. Highly suggest checking out their website. They have a lot of awesome products. So yeah. One more thing I want to check out before I end the video is the little uh, instruction booklet right here, or not really instruction, more of a good description of all of the other ones that they have, if you guys want to check them out. Look at all of these. We have a cute Jolteon, Flareon, Vaporeon, Eevee, and the Pikachu. And I think the Eevee is my favorite out of these, because they're sleeping and holding their tail. So, a lot of different options if you want to check out the website, like I said. But yeah, and today we're going to be looking at another gotcha from Modes for You. I have a few things from these guys. They sent this to me. They're a location based in Hong Kong that does kawaii Japanese um, imports, and they ship internationally. So I'm going to put them in the link in the description below. And if you've seen some of my last previous videos, you saw some more stuff from them. And today I'm really excited because I got to pick this one out. And it should be a, let's open it up. Oh yeah, it is. This is going to be something really cute. This is a hamster that goes on a spoon. And I thought it was really cute. So let's go ahead and open this up and take a really close look at it. Alright, so the first thing we have right here is the hamster. Let's go ahead and zoom in on him real good. So this is what the hamster looks like. Very cute. It even has little pink uh, foot pads right there, along with the arms. Very cute face. And it kind of has like a orange gradient backing as well. And the cute little uh, nub tail kind of looks like a Russian dwarf hamster. But let's go ahead and grab the spoon right here. So this is what the spoon looks like. Made out of a uh, flexible plastic, probably because it needs to fit inside of the uh, gotcha ball. And then it also comes with this little dollop of whipped cream. So I'm assuming we place the whipped cream on here, kind of like that. And then you get the hamster. And there we go. It took me a second to figure out how to get it on there, but. As you see, the hamster is uh, laying on the spoon, and there's a little dollop of whipped cream behind him. Kind of a cute little thing that they got going on right here. You can kind of adjust him a little bit too if you want him to lay on his back. It's kind of a cute little idea. I like it a lot, and I'm going to be giving this to my fiance. Luckily, uh, Christmas is coming up for me, so I have a lot of little gifts that I can give her that she'll really enjoy. But yeah, what do you guys think? Not the most uh, practical thing for like usable reasons, but for collectors, I think it's really awesome. Nice and detailed, and I think it's a very unique idea. A huge shout out to my Patreons. Thank you guys so much for your support. You guys are awesome. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to comment, rate, and subscribe. And as always, I'll see you in the next video.